Hello everyone and welcome to my monthly vlog. This vlog is about things I've been talking about with clients at Magenta this month. Number one has been around rising inflation again and whether we should be amending cash flow assumptions for this longer term. I've been asked this by dozens of clients this month. I'm going to steal a line from a great blog that was written by Adam Leckie from Press With Truth, the software provider we use for forecasting, who started his blog with, inflation hits a 30 year high and you should do absolutely nothing. We get it. It seems alien that we wouldn't be advising to change your forecast, sticking to an inflation figure of 3% per annum, where inflation is sitting at nearly three times that mark right now. However, it's vital to remember that cash flow models are long-term illustrations of your potential financial future. The assumptions we make in our models should therefore reflect this. So if we're projecting 20, 30, or even 40 years plus of your future, I'm sure you'll agree it makes sense to consider what inflation has been doing over a similar period. As a yardstick, the 30-year average of the RPI is 2.827%. At Magenta, we can by all means show you what it would look like if inflation over the longer term crept up to, say, 4%. But it's important to understand that whilst inflation is high right now, it could be short-lived and hopefully will be back under control within 12 months, and that this may not sway the longer term average too much. We will, of course, continue to monitor this for all our clients and let you know if we need think that changes are required. If you fancy reading Adam's full blog, which is designed for practitioners like me, but is really interesting, then do pop to truthsoftware.co.uk for their insights tab, um, which is where you can find their blog. Number two is about gift aid. I've been asked several times this month about gift aid and what limits are placed on claiming gift aid. Donations through gift aid means charities can claim an extra 25p for every pound you give and it doesn't cost you any extra. And if you pay tax above the basic rate, you can claim the difference between the rate you pay and the rate of the donation, known as higher rate tax relief. To be honest, I don't think many people really think about the details of this too much and just tick that box knowing um, they're making a donation. Um, but knowing the rules is quite important in several scenarios. The danger comes if you either don't pay any tax at all or you make larger contributions to charity and don't pay enough tax to be able to claim the uh, tax relief. To use gift aid, you must have paid enough income and capital gains tax um, to HMRC in the tax year in which you make the donation. It needs to at least be equal to the amount the charity will reclaim. Another way to calculate this is your donations will qualify as long as they're not more than four times what you have paid in tax in that tax year. You must tell the charities you support if you stop paying enough tax, because if not, you or they may need to repay the tax relief. If you're only receiving minimum pension income, for example, up to the personal allowance, and the balance of your income comes from savings and investments, you need to be careful not to fall into this trap, as you may not be paying any tax or enough tax to claim the gift aid. If you're concerned, then of course, get in touch and we can check everything for you. Number three is why do we have all this content about women and do we not want to look after male clients anymore? We got asked by a long-standing client this month why he was being bombarded with feminist blogs. I wanted to address this in my blog because it's important to me that we don't alienate any client and to make sure that everyone knows we're certainly um, uh, not trying to make people feel unwelcome. In March, it was International Women's Day and we decided for the month to focus content to celebrate this day, educating women about finance and promoting our fantastic new women's guide. At Magenta, we are passionate about helping everyone with their financial planning, but it's no secret that we really feel women need a slightly different approach when considering their finances, and we feel we are well-placed to deliver a great service for women. When Julie and I started Magenta, we found naturally more women approached us as new clients because we were female. 
advisors. In fact, only 16% of advisors are female in the UK, so we're quite rare and hard to find. Currently, the growth in women's wealth is outpacing the overall growth in global wealth, yet women are still less likely to seek financial advice than men, and it just doesn't add up. And two, so many women are still putting their futures in jeopardy by leaving their partners to handle all their finances. Females are the largest underserved segment in financial services, so this is something that Magenta wants to try and address. We do still work with many male clients and couples, all of whom we welcome because our passion is financial planning. But it's becoming clear to us that we're good at advising women and that our focus is to help women live their best lives, feeling empowered and financially in control. Saying that, we're still delighted to work with any new client who is attracted to our experience and knowledge, our style and brand, and of course, our people, because it's all really just about people and planning for the future. So that's my three things this month, and I hope you found it useful and of interest. If you want to chat more about financial planning, get in touch and we'd be delighted to help.